Use of tolerance stack up analysis is one of the most important step in finalizing and optimizing tolerance values for given critical dimensions on the engineering drawings. Tolerance stack up provides us opportunity to open up the tolerances further and still meet the function and reduce the overall manufacturing cost. My name is Kevin Kutto and in this video, let's study how to conduct worst case tolerance stack up analysis with a coordinate tolerancing system on the parts. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel to help us bring more such free knowledge for you. Let's begin this video with simple definition of tolerance stack up. Tolerance stack up analysis is a calculation which determines maximum or minimum clearance or interference between two features on the single part or multiple features in the assembly. A tolerance stack up analysis helps us to verify if the part meets its intended function like gap, flushness or interference requirements and optimize the dimensions and tolerance values to meet the function as well as to reduce the manufacturing cost and to reduce the overall cost of poor quality by ensuring most parts meet their intended function. As shown in this example, we have blue and red parts which are assembled together. In this example, we might be interested in finding the clearance when these two parts are assembled together in their worst case. And in this example, we might be interested in calculating the overlap when these two parts are assembled together. So this can be done with the tolerance stack up analysis. Now tolerance stack up analysis could be classified into many types. The first way is linear versus radial stack up analysis and it is based upon if dimensions are linear or diametrical. Like in this example, if I have to calculate design clearance between two sides of blue part and red part, all the dimensions which determine this clearance are linear. So it is called linear stack up. But in other example, if I have to determine worst case clearance, between these two round parts, all the contributing dimensions which determine this clearance are diametrical. So it is radial stack up. The second way is part or assembly stack up analysis based upon if we are doing the stack up on a single part or assembly of multiple parts. The third type is 1D, 2D, and 3D stack ups. 1D stack up analysis involves all one dimensional contributors like as in this example of blocks. Here all the contributing dimensions which determine this clearance are lined up in one direction only and that's why this is the example of 1D stack up. In 2D stack up angular faces and their variations also contribute into overall result. In this example both mating parts are going to meet on an angular surface. So variation of angular mating surface also contribute in determining the overall length of these two parts together. This is the example of 2D stack up. We can solve this by converting this 2D dimension into 1D with the help of trigonometry or we can solve this with the help of softwares like CTOL and 3DCS. It's not all the time possible and easy to convert 2D into 1D. In 3D stack up, complex mechanisms which has part variations in more than one direction, sometimes even in all the directions are involved. If assembly has moving parts, it can make your analysis very complex. So that's where 3D stack up analysis is going to be involved. We need softwares like CTOL or 3DCS to do this 3D stack up analysis. The fourth way is worst case or arithmetic or statistical tolerance stack up analysis. Worst case analysis is suitable when we deal with the non mass production parts or very few contributors into the stack up analysis which may not be showing statistical variation. Statistical analysis is suitable when parts are mass produced or contributors are more than five as a benchmark where statistical variation plays the role. Compared to worst case analysis, the only additional step in statistical analysis is to calculate standard deviation and do process capability analysis to verify the result. Standard deviation or sigma is calculated by root sum square or modified root sum square methods 
and from there it derives their name as RSS or MRSS methods. The fifth way is if we are dealing with the coordinate dimensioning system or geometric dimensioning system. In this video, we are going to study the example of Tollens Jacob analysis with the coordinate tolerancing system. So now that you know the classification of stack up analysis, let's understand worst case analysis for part 1D linear stack up with the coordinate tolerancing dimensions on the part. The first step in the part stack up analysis is to determine the objective of the stack up and that means why we are doing this stack up. Now as you see here we have a blue and orange parts which are legacy parts which means they were used in our old designs. If you carefully observe because orange part design of lug did not require the slot dimension to be directly tolerant here we had not added slot dimension or width dimension on the blue part directly into the engineering drawing. But now we have a new design of orange part and we want to use same old legacy design of the blue part. So blue part is not changing but the orange part has changed. Because of change in the orange part slot width of the blue part is now very critical. But interestingly it is not dimensioned directly into the engineering drawing. So in this case, I must do tolerance stack up analysis to determine if the slot width is sufficient to accommodate the lug into it. Note that this slot width is a result of dimensional variation of all other contributing dimensions and their tolerances. So the objective of this stack up is to find the minimum slot width on the legacy part, that means blue part, to fit new design of orange part. Now once we determine the objective, the next step is the assumptions and conditions for stack up analysis. These are some of the generic assumptions which we have for tolerance stack up. The first one is temperature of the part. Here we are dealing with room temperature. In some cases at higher temperature, part dimensions might vary. And if you want to take that into account, we should mention it here. Do parts meet print specifications? That means have we checked in actual production whether all the parts which are contributing into the tolerance stack up analysis or all the dimensions in case of part stack up analysis are meeting the drawing specifications. That means actually produced part dimensions are within the spec. Does stack up include wear of the part? In some of the cases wear and tear with time can also play part in tolerance stack up analysis. If you want to take that into account you have to clearly mention it. But in this example wear and tear is ignored. Amount of deflection of the part. In some of the part because of the loading conditions the part might deflect and that might work counterproductive for your stack up analysis. So if you want to consider that deflection into your stack up analysis and you want to modify some of the dimensions to take care of that deflection, then that has to be clearly mentioned here. If the part is going to be subjected to any unusual conditions which might affect its dimensions and tolerances, we should mention it here as well. This step is important in the cases where we know that final result of dimension and tolerances might be little bit different than what we are specifying into the engineering drawing. So this step is going to show the reason why there are some dimensions deviating or taken differently than what we have mentioned into the engineering drawing. The third step is to define the type of taller stack up analysis. For example, the stack up is going to be 1D, that means are we going to use Excel sheet to solve that? or the stack up is going to be 2D, that means some angular faces are also involved and are we going to convert that into 1D or we are going to use 3D analysis softwares like 3DCS or CTOL in order to solve that or we are going to do 3D analysis. You have to also determine are you going to use worst case analysis or statistical analysis and in statistical analysis whether it will be root sum square or modified root sum square method. In this example, we are going to have 1D linear stack up with worst case analysis. In the fourth step, we have to label the start point and the direction of stack up. So as you see, I have shown a blue part here and we are interested in finding the worst case for this slot width. That means minimum slot width. As you can see, I have shown a arrow with a dot and the arrow pointing towards end. So this dot shows the starting point of my stack up and where the arrow ends 
it shows the end point of my stack up. Left side I have shown A and right side I have shown B. You can use any letters. In this case, I have used A and B. That means I am interested in gap A, B. At the top here, you see there are arrows which are shown in both the directions and they are placed just above the start point. The arrows which are pointing from left to right are positive, whereas the arrow which is pointing right to left is negative. Does it matter if I change the start point here and end point here? or if I change the sign conventions positive here and negative here, it is not going to change the result. But there can be confusion in interpretations because of sign conventions if you are not using consistent sign conventions and consistent application of start and end points. So the best practice is use left to right or bottom to up as a start point to end point and left to right as positive, right to left as negative. It brings consistency in interpreting the stack up analysis results. So the fifth step is selecting the desired answer which is driven by design. So this target has to be driven by our design. That is very important to understand. We just cannot select any of the target. The step is necessary only when your mating orange part design is ready. If you are trying to design the orange part and in order to design this orange part, you just want to determine what is the worst case width of the slot, then this target step is not necessary. This step can be eliminated in that case. But here our orange part is already ready and that's why we have to follow this step. In our example, lug on this orange part which assembles into the slot into the blue part is designed at 60 plus minus 0.5. That means maximum width of this lug is going to be 60 plus 0.5 which is nothing but 60.5. Now this maximum width must fit into the slot and when it fits into the slot, I want at least minimum design clearance to be 0.25. So that means minimum slot width to fit this maximum lug of 60.5 and design clearance of 0.25 is going to be 60.5 plus 0.25 design clearance which is 60.75. So my target here is minimum slot width on the blue part must be greater than 60.75. And with the help of this toddler stack up analysis, we are going to understand if our design is meeting this target or not. That means are we able to fit this lug or orange part into the blue part or not. The sixth step is very crucial and it is to build a dimensional chain for toddler stack up analysis. Chain as shown here has to be continuous in nature and that means the next element of the chain has to start from where the previous element ends. Chain has to begin from the start point and it has to finish at the end point. Chain should be taken from the engineering drawing. That means every contributor has to be as per given into the engineering drawing. Like as shown here, if this dimension is taken from here to here into the engineering drawing as shown here, my chain contributor also should be shown like that. If the same dimension was broken into two dimensions, one dimension from here to here and one dimension from here to here into my engineering drawing, then I have to build chain that way only. If the chain is missing or broken, such a dimension and tolerance has to be driven by statistical process. So if the chain is not continuous, if you see that particular dimension is missing into this drawing in order to complete the chain, then such a dimension has to be driven with the help of collecting data. We have to find out what is the actual manufacturing variation for that particular dimension. And with the help of that, we have to determine the nominal dimension and the tolerance for that particular contributing dimension. But in order to do tolerance stack up analysis, we have to build a continuous chain. There should not be any dimension or tolerance missing into that chain. Now, as you see here, each contributor into the chain is shown with one sided arrow. The start point is shown with the dot and where the chain element ends that is shown with the arrow. The next element or dot has to begin from where the previous arrow is ending. There cannot be gap or clearance in between. So that's why it is called as a dimensional chain for tolerance stack up analysis. Every dimension into the chain must be marked as positive or negative 
based upon the direction and already agreed sign convention. So we have agreed that all the dimensions which are flowing from left to right are positive and right to left are negative. So we have to find out these chain contributors and assign them these signs as per the direction and convention we have agreed here. The first contributor starts from the start point and it ends here as per engineering drawing. So this is going to be my first contributor and this first contributor is showing negative because as per sign convention the dimensions from right to left are negative. Now my next contributor or contributing dimension start from the point where the previous dimension end and that's why I am starting it from here. Now I have to go to the engineering drawing and find out which is that dimension which is going to start from this point and going to move towards left. And that dimension is 180 plus minus 1.2. As I explained earlier, if this dimension was split into two parts, here to here and here to here, then there will be two contributing dimensions into my chain. From here, I have to move towards the end point and there is no direct dimension given here. So I have to move from this point to the this point. And that's why 60 plus minus 0.5 is going to be my next contributor. So as you see here, this dimension flows from right to left as well as 60 plus minus 0.5 also flows from right to left and that's why both are negative. From this phase I have to start moving towards end. There is no direct dimension given here so I have to move to this end first and then from here I have to reach to the end point. Now if you observe here this slot width is the variation of all the contributing dimensions in left to right direction only that means one direction only. We are not taking any dimension with vertical direction into our stacker analysis chain because that is not going to determine the slot width. So now that I reached this point, from here I will move to the right and that is going to be my next contributor. It is positive as per sign convention. Left to right is positive. And from here I will reach to the end point which is my next contributor and it is negative as per sign convention. Right to left is negative. So now that I have got all the contributors into the chain, my chain looks perfect, it is continuous, every contributor is starting from where the previous contributor ended, it is as per engineering drawing and it started from the start point and it ended at the end point. Now the next or seventh step is to convert all tolerances into equal bilateral tolerances. Now why we have to convert all tolerances into equal bilateral? because our tolerance form supports only plus minus equal bilateral tolerances. Here all the tolerances are already given into equal bilateral so we need not do anything. But I am just going to take one example so that you know how to convert it into equal bilateral. So suppose we have this 40 dimension which is plus minus 0.3 but instead of plus minus 0.3 if the dimension was given like 0 and plus 0.6 as a upper tolerance then this is unilateral tolerance. We cannot use unilateral tolerance in our form and that's why I have to convert that into equal bilateral. So here my upper limit is going to be 40.6 and my lower limit is going to be 40 right. So 40 minus 0 so that is 40. So my mean is going to be in between them. So it will be 40.6 that is going to be my mean and the plus minus tolerance which I am going to get here is nothing but 0.3. So 40.3 plus minus 0.3 is going to give me these limits. So I converted this unilateral tolerance into equal bilateral tolerance and now I am going to use this in my stack up analysis form. So that is how you convert unilateral tolerances into equal bilateral tolerances. Now that we have got all the dimensions and tolerances and we have got the chain, let's put them into our stack up analysis form. In the stack up analysis form, left side as you see we have ID number. So every contributing dimension into the chain has been given unique ID. Then we have drawing number. As you see we are doing part stack up analysis, drawing number is going to be only one. But in case of assembly stack ups, these drawing numbers can be different for different parts. Then we have revision number for that engineering drawing. Then we are referring to location of the particular contributor. So where that contributor that means 75 plus minus 0.5 is located on engineering drawing. 
So our engineering drawing is going to look something like this. This engineering drawing can be divided into multiple segments on the horizontal as well as vertical axis. We can give names like A, B, C, D, E, F like here and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 like this here. And then when my dimension is located somewhere, I can find which is the letter and which is the number associated with that. And I can also mention on which sheet of this drawing, like first sheet, second or third, this dimension is located. So that becomes easier for anybody to look into the drawing and find that contributor. So here it is mentioned E3. E3 means E letter and 3 number here. So that means the dimension is located somewhere here, right? E3. And dash 1 means it's the sheet number 1. Then here we are adding description of that particular contributor. So my dimension 1 or contributor number 1 is slot to the first step, right? So that is what given here. For every contributor, we have added the description. Then we have listed dimension and is plus minus tolerance. So as I said, this form supports plus minus tolerance and we have already converted all the tolerances into plus minus. All these are contributors as per my dimensional chain, which we have done on a previous slide. Now that we have got all the dimensions, we have to put them into plus and minus columns. So plus and minus conventions we have already given into the dimensional chain. All right to left dimensions were negative and left to right dimensions were positive. If you remember, only one dimension was positive, right? Which was 420 overall dimension because it was flowing left to right. All other dimensions were flowing right to left. So all were negative. And that is what I have mentioned here. So I have put all these dimensions into the right column positive or negative as per the convention and the tolerances all these tolerances are given into the tolerance block now we have to get the summation of positive and here only one positive dimension is there so summation is going to be 420 and then we have to also get summation of negative so 75 plus 180 plus 60 plus 40 which is going to give us 355 so summation of negative is 355 and then is summation of tolerance as well so 0.5 plus 1.2 plus 0.5 plus 1.5 plus 0.3 is going to give us 4. So we got summation of positive, summation of negative and summation of tolerance. Now once we get that, we have to get the mean. So mean is the difference between summation of positive and summation of negative and which is 420 minus 355 which is nothing but 65. Now many engineers get confused here. Mean looks like an average. And average means some people think that we have to average out all the dimensions. But here we are not talking about average of all the dimensions. Here we are talking about the mean of the slot width. So slot width mean is going to be 65. And the tolerance will come here as it is. So 4. Now we have got the mean and plus minus tolerance. So we can get maximum and minimum limits. So 65 plus 4 is going to be 69 is our maximum limit. 65 minus 4, 61 is going to be our minimum limit. We are more interested into minimum limit because minimum slot width is what we were interested into to fit the maximum size lug. And what was the target there? Target was 60.75. So as far as minimum limit of this slot is more than 60.75, we were okay. So that is what we are saying here. 60.5 was our lug width and it was maximum width of the lug. And right now we are getting minimum limit of the slot or minimum dimension of the slot to be 61. So 61 is greater than 60.5. So that means our lug is going to nicely fit into this slot. What happens if this 61 was lesser than 60.5? We will have problem in fitting this orange part into the slot. So that's where optimization will come into the picture. So what we have to do in the optimization? In the optimization, I can play with the dimensional chain. I can see whether I can eliminate some of the dimensional chain element and modify the engineering drawing. Or can I reduce some of the tolerance contributor? Of course, we cannot do that without consulting the manufacturing team. We have to buy their agreement. I'm not saying that in all the cases, you can use all the methods. Sometimes we have to change the dimensional chain. Sometimes we have to modify the tolerance values. Sometimes even you have to go to the uh, other design engineer who is designing the orange part and ask them to 
modify that lug dimension. So all the possibilities have to be opened and that is what optimization phase is all about. When we are not able to meet the target, we have to go for the optimization phase. As you carefully see in this example itself, all the dimensions which are taken into the contribution are at their extreme ends. So either they are positive extremes or negative extremes. And that's why we are calling this method as a worst case analysis method. In reality, this may not happen. It's not going to happen that all the dimensions are going to be manufactured in their extreme cases, especially if you are dealing with a mass production. And that's where statistical process is going to help us. Statistical process is going to consider the plus minus three sigma or plus minus six sigma variations based upon how much accuracy we need. And based upon that, we are going to get the maximum and minimum limit. But here in this case, we are using worst case analysis where we are assuming that every contributing dimension is going to fall at its worst case. When all the sizes become smaller or bigger, will get minimum size or maximum size and that is how the worst case analysis method works so hopefully by this time you might have understood how to do a tolerance stack up analysis by using worst case analysis method and to optimize it you can help us to bring more such knowledge videos for you by subscribing to the youtube channel thank you for watching this video